Computer scientists and computer engineers change the world by designing, building, and deploying innovative solutions to real-world problems. Students design and build hardware and software systems, develop effective ways to solve problems, and invent new and better ways to use computers to address the challenges we face every day. My name is Yao Anakwa. I'm a PhD student in computer science and engineering. From the time I was a little kid, I've always been interested in solving problems. I see computer science and engineering as a way to take that drive to solve problems and formalize it. Engineering teaches you techniques and approaches to problem solving that I find important in the work that I do every day. For a long time, computer science has been working on problems that really only affect a very small part of the population on this planet. Technology is a fantastic tool and it can really make a difference in the lives of many people. Um, after a couple of years in graduate school, I figured that we should try to apply some of the technologies that we're working on here in the developed world and see if we can solve some of the really big problems. I think when people imagine computer science and engineering, they imagine someone sitting in a lab soldering electronics or sitting in a basement, you know, writing some code. Uh, for me, I haven't had that experience. Computer science and engineering has taught me a set of skills that can solve some of the world's really big problems. In my case, it's global development, but for others, it may be climate change or energy. Um, so computer science and engineering really helps you solve these problems, and it also happens to be fun, which is always a good thing. I do research in technology for developing regions. My current project is called Open Data Kit, or ODK. Open Data Kit is really great at making organizations more efficient. And most of our users are based in East Africa. Um, so we've seen projects in Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, and the Central African Republic. Um, outside of Africa, there's deployments in Brazil. There's deployments ongoing in the U.S. as well. Uh, we've seen projects in India. Um, so it's used in a bunch of different places. Let me give you an example. You see a patient in a rural hospital. You have to often fill out that patient's information on a paper form. By the time you take that paper form, get it manually entered into a medical record system, and get that information available when the patient visits again, um, that can take months at a time. Some of the tools that we've worked on automates that process and allows those, those workers to go out into the field, collect the data on a mobile phone, and send it instantly to the clinic. This shortens the time from when you collect the data to when the data is available for clinical care. You know, you can tell it's a, it's a mud brick house, but the guy is holding a cell phone. You know, he's using that cell phone to, to check his messages. So even in a rural environment, you can still get um, cell phone connectivity. It's sometimes difficult to simply take a piece of technology and introduce it into a new environment, especially in a developing region. So we work very closely with our partners to make sure that when we deploy a new piece of software, a new tool, we work with them to both train their staff and train their technical staff so the project sustains itself. This way, they don't rely on us for long-term support. They can change the tools to fit their particular workflows. Right now, we have two or three graduate students working on the project, and we've had up to 10 undergraduate students working on the project. That's been extremely rewarding because it really demonstrates that you don't have to have an advanced degree to really contribute to projects like these. We've had students from first years all the way to fourth years contribute um, and not only write code, but see that code released to the general public. And I think that's really important to get undergraduate students involved in research at this level. I came to realize that technology really has a big role to play in solving some of the world's biggest problems. Uh, the work we do s tries to empower local folks in developing countries to solve some of their information challenges with technology. I've seen subsistence farmers in Rwanda and very sick patients in Kenya really benefit from the software that I've written. Um, that's something you simply can't get in other fields and I feel that that kind of rewarding feeling you get when you realize the impact you're having is the reason I continue to do this work.